So many people try to come to the Lord intellectually. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to get very far. They sit and they process and they think. And they think some more. It's not how you interact with Him. So emotional. So the depths of your heart and your love and your affections. It ain't about all you and all your whatever. It's about all Him and all who He is. <laughs> you know, I never found a scripture that says, look at yourself and live. <laughs> never found a verse of scripture that says, looking unto yourself, rejoice. <laughs> now, there's true that we had examined whether or not Christ be in us. I mean, you either reprobate, Christ is in you. I'm not looking, I'm not seeing a bunch of reprobates. Christ is in you. I mean, it's just a, what an extreme. That's as extreme as light from darkness. You don't need to be uncertain. Well, I don't know, am I in the light right now or am I in the dark? I mean, it's an extreme. It's extreme. Oh, it's even more extreme than the boundaries of love and hate because that's been mixed up over people. Oh, but belonging to God or belonging to Satan? My goodness, what an extreme. Hallelujah. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white like wool? Are they white like snow? Though they be stained with the red crimson dye of murderous sin and iniquity. You should make them white like wool. Pure. Pure. Ain't God good? Isn't it good to be His? Yeah. Hallelujah. What happens? You start thinking about these things and you become one of those who are called ecstatics. You're just ecstatic about God. Hey. It don't take too long being ecstatic about God and some other divine eruption going to come out of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It ain't going to be too long. You know, I, I, you know there, are, there are challenges that everybody goes through. There are events that no one can really wrap their head around. Don't try. Let God be in control and recognize that you win because he's vowed it. He vowed you win. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if maybe it's going to take people to die and go to heaven and see Jesus before they're going to really begin to worship him with their heart and with their soul like they should. Somebody said, well, God is a spirit. We must worship in the spirit. That's what I just said. Everybody wants to dichotomize humanity down to the point that they don't know what they're talking about. The very being, our being, our spiritual life, who we are, how we, how we function, how, what we really want, what we really need, what we really desire. And I pray that you'll let God so captivate that, that your desires, your affections, that you'll let Him so captivate that. And it begin to make the difference of whether you make wrong choices or right choices. It'll begin to make the difference of you being able to hear God or Him just being silent. Make the difference of you being able to see him or just he remains in, in obscurity. It'll make the difference of whether you're able to speak on his behalf and cause hearts to melt and respond to him or it just becomes just more words. And Father set his heart on causing you and I to become such mouthpieces, oracles of God. Oracles of God. Thank you, Father. I want you to be seated. And, you know, we're just so blessed because, we're so blessed because a couple of things. Musicians, you get to sit down and rest for a while. And this minister to you tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're so blessed. We got the church building in Woo! Oregon on the ground. Hallelujah. On the ground. It's in, it's in hundreds of pieces, but it's on the ground. 
And now all we've got to do is be assembled. And I'm just so praising God because really we were basically, we were basically one week, we were two weeks out, we had like, I think around $4,000 of the money that we, the remainder of the money that we needed. And then with, within the, hallelujah. <laughs> And then you guys just stepped up, and I had a person that came to me today, this morning that was in the meeting, said, you know, I love to give to the Lord, and, and, and giving is a part of my life, but all of a sudden there comes to be a place where God takes you where it's not comfortable anymore, and it becomes sacrificial giving. It's giving, and I don't know where the finances are going to come to meet the needs and the responsibilities and obligations of, lively, of my livelihood of just, you know, the interest of food and housing and but I just went ahead and obeyed God. Uh, she was telling me, you know, the Lord had given me, when I first said it, the Lord had given her a, you know, a figure, and she had written it out and, you know, and made a pledge, but she's sitting in the meeting, and the Lord took it to another level. And she realized, oh, no, that's going to cost me. This is, we're, we're risky now. And then she was just telling me about all the blessings that God, the miracles that God creates. Listen, people don't want to go in the miracle realm. Many people don't want to go in the miracle realm. Because they're not willing to take the risk that the miracle realm demands. I just want you to understand this. Listen, your heart's going to follow your pocketbook. And your faith is going to be developed upon the trust that is surrounding that. And you're going to have to just understand it. I know it's hard for some of you. Burn the boo. <laughs> I know it's hard for some of you. Get rid of the, you know, the pacifiers. Time to grow up. Step into Father's stuff and recognize he's a big God. Yes. And he's looking for you and I to step out in realms of faith where he can produce great miracles for us. Amen. Amen. I want you to remember that everyone, beginning with the Lord Jesus Christ, died for this. He, they, everyone died for this. All the, Jesus died for this. All the apostles died for this. The early church, the majority of them went and as to the place of a martyr and to, as the witnesses, those who are witnessing the Lord Jesus Christ. They died for this and you and I are supposed to do the same. If you're hanging on to your life, I'm going to tell you right now, you're blowing smoke. And it's time to have some fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have smoke and burn people's eyes. Fire, people can come and warm up around it. Amen. Have fire, bring some light. You is it, dude. Smoke ain't giving no light. You don't even know what's going on in the dark. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's obnoxious. So I just praise God for the things that you're allowing God to do in your life. And, you know, I, I just... I got so many things I want to talk to you tonight about, but I really want to talk to you about, and, and, I'm going to, and I believe the Lord is going to keep me right here. I'm going to talk to you about the Holy Ghost and the help that He's come and all that He is to us. The help that He's come to be to us, the help that He's come to bring to us, all that He is to us, and you recognizing how to participate with Him. Amen. I've discovered people who, it is amazing to me, who stepped in to learn how to participate with the Holy Ghost. In like, for example, the word of knowledge and that is so fascinating. They can give great details, great details about the different things that, that are going to happen. You know, in, in the next hour, they can, um, I was, a friend of mine was talking to me the other day about how they um, used to just pray for God given divine appointments and how that, you know, they would get certain things about different things that were going to be going on when they stepped into the mall so they would know what was happening. And there was this young man who came into the kingdom of God and all of a sudden, you know, he just said, no, 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 let's hear what Father has to say. And he would give details. And everybody would take notes. And he said, you're going to find a person that is, uh, that's, her name's Sally. She's got a red dress on. Her shoes are purple. I mean, that kind of stuff. And she's going to be in front of Macy's. She's ready for, she's ready for the kingdom of God. Walk up and call her by name. She'll be saved. Wow. No, I'm, I'm just little, little, little ones in the kingdom who somehow was able to come to God with their heart instead of their head. We somehow we're able to just move beyond all of the things that hold us in bondage. The world will hold you in bondage. The things that you hold on to, the things that the culture has made important to you. And I'm so blessed because of what just happened this past Saturday and what happened the Saturday before. Because those kinds of things will untangle you. As you begin to put God first and you begin to go out and you go to seek and save that which is lost. And you give yourself over to moving in the things of the kingdom. And I'm so blessed. I'm just so blessed for everybody who participated in this last Saturday outreach and the Saturday before. I mean, just getting them. That's the kingdom. That's all, what it's all about. That's where the fun is. I mean, what else were you going to go do, huh? And I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of you come to understand that you're never going to really begin to move in the things of the Spirit until you give yourself over to the Holy Ghost in such a way that it becomes an emotional event for you every day. Amen. I mean, it's a laugh and cry and shout and sing and rejoice and give them thanks event every day. 
People live in prisons, and I don't want you to live there. They live in places where they feel isolated from God. They live in unholy emotions instead of living in holy emotions. They live, in, they live captivated by thoughts of unforgiveness and offense, or they live captivated by situations that are so big for them it paralyzes them in the realms of fear. And we want to show you how to move past that because God the Holy Ghost has come to help and He's great help. You are on His list. Somebody said there's a satanic assignment against you. Listen, forget about it. Of course there is. I got some better news for you. There's a divine assignment Amen. on you. God's got a, desi a, di a divine assignment for you. Satanic assignment against you. Don't worry. Divine assignment for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the beautiful thing of it is, is, you know, light is so much greater than darkness that really darkness doesn't even exist. It's the absence of light. <laughs> Satan's just the absence of God. Absence of God. How powerful is he? The light shined in the darkness and the darkness could not resist. The darkness could not launch a defense. You know what I'm saying? There's no way. Set up barricades. They couldn't do it. The light, in, the light came. And this light, Christ Jesus, this light of God. God stepped into the world and the man's perversion and man's iniquity. The worst kinds of men. You know, I'm amazed because I look at some folks and I think, wow, it's somehow that... They have more, they're born of more of a propensity towards righteousness and towards purity. And even those men are still dead in their trespasses and sins. I'm amazed at Job when Job says, I do not regret nor am I ashamed for any of my days. I've lived in uprightness in all my ways. Wow. He is, was not ashamed of one single day that he lived. He lived in such righteousness before God. Enoch walked with God and lived in such righteousness before God. He pleased God so much that Father just took him. And he was living in a total perverse world, far more in, full of iniquity than what we experience right now. God's given you and I the privilege of coming and walking in the Holy Ghost, but we're going to have to break free of the earthly attachments. Go ahead and move on into heaven. You're going to have to say under, you're going to have to understand that God's been talking to some of you for many years about the CRP, the cares, riches, and pleasures, and you thought he was talking to somebody else. You kept looking over your shoulder, wondering who it was he's talking to. He's talking to the people that don't know how to flow in the Holy Ghost. It has an up and down relationship with God. It's the roller coaster, spiritual eye. We want you to get a, you know, a, a rocket pack strapped onto your back. And we want you to start getting launched straight up. And how you can every day, hallelujah, every day being about increasing God. Because God, the Holy Ghost, has come to help you. If you're looking at yourself, poor you. How miserable. Bless your Job. Job had no problem. I'm, I'm just amazed. I... I'm captivated by Job. I just read Job again. Some people read Job because they want to try to comfort themselves in the midst of affliction. I read Job because I'm just captivated and fascinated by how much he knew God and all the things he knew about God. You know, I'm just learning from Job right now. I had an audible voice speak to me the other day in a meeting. So I said, you got audible voice? Says, well, I want to have some of those. Well, you know what? Just get hungry and get busy and get yourself in a situation where you basically are deprived of sleep and food. Huh? Kind of thing, because you're running so wide open, you're going to hear yourself some audible voice. Get rid of your life. Hallelujah. Just start living for Jesus. And I'm saying so at work. I'm saying at play. I'm saying the only reason you go to work is to make money for the kingdom. Yeah, and I just figured there would only be a few yes. For that. But I want, I want you to be, and that's okay. I, would, I wouldn't want you to lie. Not in the presence of the Lord. If it's not true, it's not true. But you can ask God to help you to understand how to step into a relationship with him that will produce faith so that you can do that and find out that you can't outgive God, that God works some miracles by your obedience. And the more risky you are with your obedience, the more absolute you are with your obedience. That's right. You know, uh, Peter really learned how to rely upon the word of the Lord Jesus. From the very beginning, you know, Jesus said, listen, you know, he used Peter's 
in Andrew's boat, you know, to preach it. You remember that sermon? He say borrowed their boat. Luke chapter 4, he borrowed their boat right off of the, the very beginning. And, and uh, he said after he got finished preaching, he said, okay, let's just go fishing now. Let's just, let's launch out and let's go fishing. Peter said, no, we fished all night. We've caught nothing. But at your word. But at your word. My intellect and my mind and my thinking says, we're not gonna, it's not going to work out. We're not going to get any nothing. We're not going to get anything. It's not, gonna, it's not going to result in any good thing. It's going to be labor for naught. But at your word. There's something spiritual, something glorious, something miraculous, something supernatural, something that allows you and I to transition out of the realms of our own human existence into the realm of divine existence when we'll just say, at your word. We hear, we're married, be it unto me according to thy word. Because she could have thought all kinds of things. How on earth can a virgin have a baby? And how am I supposed to explain to somebody that the baby that I got is from God? And that, well, how is this going to go? Because everybody's going to see and I'm going to be in trouble from mom, from dad, from uncle, from auntie, from everybody. But she shut all that down. And she didn't tell the Lord all of her troubles and go, no, you can't do that. Are you going to come in and appear to everybody and explain to everybody? Are you going to show up with me in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the synagogue and tell everybody why my stomach's sticking out? No, I'm not going to do it. Huh? Isn't that amazing? How would you bargain with the Lord? What would you expect Him to do for you? He showed up to only one person and one that needed Joseph. That's it. I'm so excited about Elizabeth's going to do a Christmas play this year. She's going to a Christmas play. Everybody get around her, help her. It's Jesus born to die. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I tell you right now, I heard that, I heard that uh, uh, what is it, Mel Gibson, is that his name? Mel Gibson did Passion of Christ. I hear that he's getting ready to do the, the next part to that, where Jesus is there, having been risen from the dead, interacting with everybody and, and Pentecost. Boy, I wish I would be so wonderful if some of God's Holy Ghost filled people would do that because they don't really know what they're talking about. I hopefully he will consult with some Holy Ghost filled people. Yes. Hopefully he will think, you know, Pentecost, I better find the Pentecostals. And he'll get hooked up with the right ones and see Holy Ghost in fire and begin to understand the movings of the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabaka Seteya. But praise God for the things that people are doing. I mean, there's, you know, wow. Just to see Jesus put on display before men. To literally get on display, to get Jesus on display before everybody around us. Amen. You know, I, 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 Ann and I was just noticing the other day on Facebook where they were doing this evangelism by all these guys going to a mall and they're scattered out all over the place and all of a sudden they erupt into, you know, a song and they were, they were singing uh, one of the songs uh, about the blood of Jesus. I love that. How can we put Jesus on display? How can we be radical? There's no way to be more radical with Christ Jesus than seeing radical miracles. And you're not going to see radical miracles until you radically live for Him. I'm going to say it again. You're not going to see radical miracles until you radically live for Him. God in His loving kindness is constantly leading us into a place of complete abandonment of trust towards Him. And I know it's for some people, not just baby steps, where it's barely, it's, it's barely moving steps. <laughs> it's like we took a step and, and then, you know, one year later we're thinking about one more step. That's a slow progress. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll just take what you have. I mean, because what's going on in this church is good. It's wonderful. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Father wants to take it to a whole other dimension of the expressions of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, the Holy Spirit, is here to help us. He's here to empower us. The Lord didn't let you on your own. No. He's given you the ability to just obey Him. Obey Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we hear then, we hear Peter there in the crisis of his life. Later on when he's there in a storm at night, obeying God, crossing the sea, as the Lord Jesus had told him to, with a storm and a wind and way contrary to him, and they thought the boat was going to sink and it was being filled with water and they was in peril for their life. And, it's, you know, and here comes Jesus walking upon the water. And the first thing he says, bid me come, speak the word. Just speak the word. Christ Jesus carries a supernatural word of miraculous power and miraculous life. And all we got to do is go with it. All we got to do 
Let's go completely with it. In total abandonment, tonight we're singing these songs. Take my will and make it thine. We're singing these songs. songs a complete, total consecration to the Lord. Father, I'm going to live for you. People, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be ashamed of yourself one second after you die. If you haven't all completely and totally lived for Jesus, you're going to be ashamed of yourself one second after you die. And in fact, and if you are so blessed by God that you get to, you know, die in a process where you basically have, you know, a couple of days to just worship Him and praise Him and lay there, you know, on the bed of death, you know, rejoicing in Christ your Savior, huh? Having a Holy Ghost meeting, I'm going to have a Holy Ghost meeting. If I die like that, I'm going to have everybody around me, I'm going to have a Holy Ghost meeting, I'm going to have singers. If i got to hire them, I know I'm going to have to hire them. But I'm going to have people worshiping God, praying in the Holy Ghost. We're going to have communion, fire of God, Holy Ghost baptism, you know. But, you know, you, you sit there and you, you're going to hold your whole life. You're going to process your whole life. You're getting ready to step over. What have you done for the master? How did you really live for him? Because all of the things, all of the excuses won't work at that moment. They work now. But they won't work then. Because truth is set in. And all of the excuses are irrelevant. As really irrelevant as they are now. They're all irrelevant because there's no way that you really are, are willing to go with it at that moment in time. You recognize, wait a minute. I did my own thing. I lived my own life. I gave Jesus Christ half. I kept the other. Oh, people, I pray in the name of the living God that you will, with total abandonment, find out ways to serve God. If you don't know, if you're coming up short, come to me. I got thousands of ideas. I got thousands of ways for you to lose your life. It just depends on what scale of radical you're on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm looking, God's looking, I'm believing for, I'm calling out by the Spirit of the Lord for people to get so radical, so full of abandonment. I've so longed to see those singing revivals that took place in wells take place again. Even right here in the church, in, in, in the abiding place, and then beyond that, to see what took place with Evan Roberts where people are just worshiping God and the glory so comes and fills the place that nobody is able to stand. No sinner is able to remain rebellious against God. But everybody is overwhelmed by Holy Ghost conviction. Uh, just a bunch of coal miners. Just a bunch of people get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, go work in the coal mine. But then, come 6 o'clock in the evening, they're going to go to the church. They're going to say, well, I'm just tired. We've been going to church now for five months, five years. We have church over there every night. I don't know what's wrong with that pastor. We don't even care. Does he think that our whole life is just about Jesus? Our whole life is just about the kingdom of God? Our whole life is just about going to church? whole life about being in the meeting? Yeah, that's what he thinks. What do you think? Because it doesn't take too long sitting in the meeting if you've got a right heart towards God that you're going to be launched out into a place in God where you're going to start having meetings. You're going to be launched out into a place of God where you're going to be able to pray people into the kingdom. You're going to be launched out into a place in God where you'll be able to speak in the authority of the word and the spirit of God grip, captivate the hearts of men. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open up your Bibles tonight to Romans chapter 8. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about two very favorite verses of scripture of mine. Yeah, verse 26 and 27. Of course, I like the whole chapter. In fact, I like the whole book, amen, of, to the Romans. In fact, I like the whole New Testament. But, you know, tonight this is very favorable. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Because this is what God the Holy Ghost wants to talk to you about. And I pray that tonight that everybody is going to be hearers and also doers. I pray tonight that, you, I pray tonight that your short-term spiritual memory will be healed and you will not be forgetful hearers of the Word. I pray tonight... That you'll listen to God's word and you'll never recognize that it's God's word. And that you'll respond to his word. You know, there are people who say, I don't like what you said. You can say that all you want, but I just gave you the scripture. You, I, I don't agree with you. You can say, I don't agree with you, but I just gave you the verses of scripture that said exactly what I said. It didn't have anything to it or take away from it. So you're not agreeing, disagreeing or agreeing with me. You're disagreeing or agreeing with God. All I am is a spokesman. I'm not trying to be a sage over here. I'm not trying to be some kind of, you know... Uh, person with some kind of mystical insight, some kind of philosopher or something. I'm over here telling you about what God says in His Word and, 
and telling you that there is great blessings and great exploits and great events and a great life that God wants to begin to, you know, develop you in even in a greater fashion, in a faster way. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can live your life if you want, but my goodness, you talk about what a bad choice. When it's com contrasting compared to living God's life, I get to live God's life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world will hate me just like it hates him. But big deal, man. I, got, I lost nothing there. I'm not interested in their opinion anyway. You know, anybody who wants to hang out with the devil, who cares what they think? Amen. Who cares what their opinion is? Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on. I mean, well, I'm, you know, people are all wrapped up in this realm of what everybody thinks about them, want, how they look, everybody trying to dress like everybody else. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Trying to talk like everybody else, act like everybody else, smile like everybody else, frown like everybody else. Goodness gracious. Get yourself some personal work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. Get yourself some personal work. God wants you to give you some, God the Father wants to give you some divine worth by bringing you into the family. <sighs> Hallelujah. 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 I was so blessed to have John. He, he didn't come tonight. I don't know if he's watching my web. I hope he is. He, I met him on the, on the airplane when I was coming back from uh, Connecticut. He's, from, he's actually living here. He's from Maine. And, um, then it, come to find out his best friend when he grew up with as a pastor at the church that uh, Joshua and Allie was going to up there at Santa Cruz. And, you know, and I'm, I'm on him, man. <laughs> I'm on him, preach the word, hallelujah, the word Amen. goes forth, and then we just basically come in with, a, with the, uh, huh, the shock and awe, uh, heavenly artillery, you know, the shock and awe bomb, bomb uh, what is it? <laughs> Bombardment group to prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that you'll let God lay yes. souls upon your heart. Yes. I pray that you'll let God lay the matters of the kingdom upon your heart, the matter of nations upon your heart. I pray that you'll begin to recognize all the authority that Father has given to us in Christ Jesus and the lack that you have of it. And say, wait a minute, I'm going to step into it. Somebody said to me not too long ago, they said, you know, I just feel like such a failure because this thing or that thing happened because of the sickness or that disease. I said, don't feel like a failure. Just put it all on me because I don't have enough anointing to set you free and anybody else that ever stands in front of me. Huh? So don't you feel bad. Just feel bad for me. Don't feel bad for yourself because I'm, I'm the one here more fully engaged into these realms of faith. And you go ahead and when you're feeling bad for me, go ahead and pray for me because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm on the run. Take hold of everything that Jesus, God's only begotten Son, displayed and has given to us. I'm going to take hold of it. I'm going to sit around and play yawn, talk about what little thing I did, like it was some big event. Give me a break. You know what I'm saying? Most of the things that we call big events can't even qualify to these works. Are you with me? Yeah. Don't even qualify. I just be quiet about that. You know, people bragging about the fact they went surfing. It was only six inches. <laughs> uh, they came off the cornice, but it was really the rope pull. You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about it, right? Just wait, 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 wait till this, like, something big happened. Wait till something event happened. You know what I'm saying? But it, praise God, I know that Father Holy Ghost is working with us to take us into a place to where that we can declare his mighty acts, so that we can show his great manifest power to the nations of the earth. Where people are going to be in awe of who Jesus Christ is as he's being revealed through you and me. I want him to be here. I can just imagine how the disciples felt, you know, when, when Jesus shows up, you know, he shows up after the resurrection. He's there in their midst. They're all like, go, they're just like stuck. They're hanging on to him. You're alive. This is amazing. You know, they're just hanging on. They're just full of joy. And I'm just disappears. They're like, what? Where'd he go? When is he coming back? How long is he going to be gone for? Are you with me? Are you with me? Because this is what church is all about. This is what church is all about. Jesus. It's just him. And without him, we're just sitting here looking at each other. Nobody's impressed with it, each other kind of thing. And the Lord tells them that, he's, that they've got to go into Galilee. Basically, the first place where they met. He said, I'll meet you there. Whew. 
Isn't that powerful? Yes. I'll meet you now at the first place we met. I hear Baba say to me all the time, I'll meet you right where we first met. Right at that altar of surrendering, right at that altar of brokenness, right at that altar where you're done with you. Yeah. Right at that altar of great neediness, right at that altar where you cried out and said, oh God, change me. I'll meet you there. It's true. Over and again. I'm going to talk to you tonight about how the Holy Ghost has come to help us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you can feel bad about yourself. Let me just I'm going to break the news to you. You'll feel bad about yourself for the rest of your life. Somebody said, you know, these things and that. And I said, listen, you ought to forget about all that stuff. I'm here to make you hate your life in this world so you'll love his. Amen. I'm here to make you hate. I'm not here to accommodate you. I'm not here to thrill you. I'm not here to somehow appeal to you. I'm here to teach you how to hate your life in this world so you can have the one he's given you. I mean, come on. People got a wrong measure of the thing. I went to the meeting and I feel terrible about myself now. Good. I did my job. The good news is you can have his life. You feel terrible or bad, or bad enough about you. You get rid of you. I'm not even in the equation no more. Amen. 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 Some of you look depressed. <laughs> That's the sign of holding on your life. Well, I don't have my life. What am I going to do? <laughs> we want to introduce you to the life of God. It's so much better than you. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love to tell people, if you're living your life, I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> huh? I wouldn't want to be me either. Not when Father has given us such an opportunity. And it's a pursuit. It's a place of hunger and thirst. I didn't think about the, the disciples as they're with him and Gal this, they're in Galilee. And now, they, I don't know how many days they spent. I think they probably only spent one or two days. They didn't spend many days together. Because of the short period of time, he was seen of them about 40 days. Did you know that? About 40 days. So they didn't spend a lot of time together because of the various events. Because already probably about two weeks have already transpired before they even get to Galilee. Are you with me? Yes. And so there wasn't a lot of days. I don't know. Maybe, maybe who knows? Maybe they even had a week hanging out. But I can just remember, I, I, can, I can just think about in the scripture where, you know, they're, they're there waiting for him to show up and they're out fishing, Right? And they hear, they hear him cry, cry out, have you caught any fish yet? <laughs> they go, no, I haven't caught nothing. Go to the other side. Immediately somebody heard the word. I, you know it, you know it, you know it. Who was it? Peter, he heard the word. He heard, at that moment in time, I'm certain he had a great suspicion that it's Jesus. He threw, the, he threw the net to the other side. As soon as he saw that thing was full, he jumped in the water and started swimming. <laughs> It's the master, he's unsure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, can you feel it? Can you yeah. feel that? Can you feel that? You want to get into that? Yeah. You want to have some of that? You yeah. want to interact on that level? Or do you just want religion, ideologies, and whatever else that comes along, something that devils and demons are going to play games with you for the rest of your life and destroy your soul and hell for eternity? I mean, you just think about it. You know, I want, I want that. Yeah. And how long they were there with him. Beholding him, listening to him, hugging on him, having a good time, joy unspeakable, full of glory. The resurrected Jesus, I mean, it was good when before he had a resurrected body. It was good when he was still the lowly lamb of Galilee getting ready to go to the cross. But now he's a resurrected Lord and it's just gotten so much better. You talk about anointed meetings. You talk about feeling the fire and power of God. But yet there was still something that was going to happen even greater. It was still saying, ooh, now I'm getting on you over here because now you can't be waiting and longing and hoping and wishing and for that day that's gone by or someday in the future when he's there with you. Because he said, I'm the comforter. He said, I'm going to have a, there's a greater meeting than you've ever had with me about ready to take place with you. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you're warming up to the idea. Because it was certainly a desperate moment to see him you know, disappear as, he's, as he ascends into heaven. And he's just talking to them and he's telling them, you know, giving them the last instructions, going on the world and preach the gospel. All power and all authority is given me in heaven and earth. And he disappears. They're like going, you can just see it. What? Are you coming back? When? Tonight? Tomorrow morning? Next week? 
You can just hear it. He's like giving the final. This is doxology. He's giving it. This is it. This is it. They're going, no way. Can you feel it? Can you feel that? Can you feel that? Can anybody feel that? Yeah. Have you got close enough to him to feel that yet? Yeah. Or is he still a figment of your imagination or a mystical religious figure? You hear what, you hear what I'm saying to yes. you? Yes. I want you to feel this. I want you to get into a place where you need him for him where, ah, uh, we'll never know what they knew because we didn't get to spend three years with them and then lose them. We didn't get to spend three years with him and then disappear out of our presence when we're all excited about his resurrection. We didn't get to spend three years with him, then have that opportunity to spend a number of days with him after the resurrection and see him disappear. And the angels show up and say, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> this is a good way to live. What's wrong with you guys? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you guys? Why are you looking up and gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. This same Jesus. But they're going, no. No, 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 oh, we want you here, oh, we want to be with you. That's, what that's what's going on, because there's this, there's this love bond that goes beyond any love that you know. I'm going to tell you right now, there's this love bond that goes beyond the love that you have for your wife, or the love that you have for your husband, or the love that you have for your mother, or the love that you have for your father. This is a love bond that you cannot know until you know him. This is a love that supersedes all other loves. This is an affection. I'm going to tell you right now, you talk about separation and anxiety. How are you listening to me? Yes. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Yes. Huh? They lost him once. They didn't want to lose him again. They lost him at Calvary's cross. They did not want to lose him again. They lost him for three days. Their hopes and their dreams and their, and their visions completely dashed, shattered, heartbroken, grieving, painful heaviness of a loss of a love that goes beyond any love that can be described in the realms of men. Now we've got him back. Oh, what joy. Oh, what love. Oh, what glory. Once again, now he disappears right out of the midst. We just started warming up with the conversation. Boom, he's gone. He doesn't announce, hey, listen, guys, I'm getting ready to disappear. He just gone, vanishes. <laughs> Please come back. And nothing happens. Please. He says, go, Terry, in Jerusalem. Now they're speaking back. He's coming back. He's coming back into their thoughts, what he was saying there that night, because he begins to download things that night that he was betrayed that he never told him, he never spoke of up into that moment. He's talking about the Holy Ghost in a whole other dimension. I mean, he said a few things about the Holy Spirit. They understood the things about the Holy Ghost through the miracles, the signs and wonders, but they didn't understand how God, the Holy Ghost, was going to come and be the personal mentor, the personal help, the personal guide the one who would be devoted to developing them in everything that belongs to God's purpose and will for us now and God's purpose and will for us when we spend the ages, his developmental plan to bring us to a place of being everything that he's purposed us to be as we step into eternity to live out an assignment that is an eternal one in his presence. Pretty radical stuff here, hey? We want you to get into this, man. I want you to get in this. I want you to get fully in. I want to get you. I want to break every band of religion, every band of philosophy and ideology and figment of your imagination and get over into a place of personal relationship, drinking the blood, eating the heavenly manna, fellowship with him because he wants to come and manifest himself to us. I mean, when he said that in John chapter 14, they couldn't really get it because he's here and they still don't believe that he's dying at the cross. But, you know... You know, Peter's still going, yeah, I've already, gotten, I've already gotten, you know, chastised for this once, so I'm not saying nothing, but I still don't believe this is going to happen. I got my sword with me, kind of thing, you know, because it ain't going to go down. But those words of John chapter, that we read in John chapter 14, he says, just obey me, keep my commandments, and, and I, my Father will love you, and I will love you. We will come make our abode with you, and I will come and manifest yes. myself to you. That came back to them, and they're like, what do we got to do? We want to see you. He says to them, he says to them, go tarry in Jerusalem. You're going to be endued with power from on high. They don't even know what they're getting ready to get into. They're getting ready to get into something so wonderful and so glorious that all of a sudden their lovesick state is, not going, to, is going to be eclipsed by even a greater love. Ah, they're going to step in from a, go from a fellowship and a, and a connection that they had with God Almighty into an intimacy and oneness that they couldn't even imagine, they're going to get over their loneliness real quick. 
They have no idea. In that, in that place, in that state, we see what they're, what they're doing. They're afraid. They're hiding out in fear, but they're obeying God. They're taking the risk. They're not going back fishing. They're not doing all the other stuff and all the other options of things that they would have to do. There was 120 there. And, of course, we know that he appeared to about 500 brethren. We did not know what happened to the other 380. Are you with me? Yes. But we know where 120 of them were. That's pretty good statistics, though. Isn't it? That's a lot better than Noah's time. Are you with me? That's a lot better than crossing over into the Jordan. That's an increase. Praise God. The power of God, the Holy Ghost comes. And all of a sudden, they step into a, the very life and boldness of Jesus that he was describing to them. They step into his life. Suddenly, he becomes alive in them. They look at each other's eyes and they go, Jesus. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. They know what it was like looking at him. They knew what it was like being around him. What, that glow on his face, that look in his eye. And they're looking at each other and they're seeing Jesus in each other. And they're going, whoa, <laughs> this is powerful. Can, can I get I know you're lost. I can see some of you. You look like you're somewhere way out in the woods. One, we're looking for some demarcations on the back of trees so you can understand where you're going north or south. I want you to grab a hold of something here with me because God wants to take you into a fellowship that will cause you not to be thirsty for the world anymore, not to be stuck and high on yourself anymore, to hate your life in this world, take hold of his life, begin to flow in the realms of divine power and glory, to get so emotional with God. God. I think next week, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be here this week, but next week I am going to be here, and I think I'm going to do a school of spirit on how to get emotional. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and not pretend no more. Just kind of move around. And just like, pop, you know, it's like, well, Pastor said, Papa said he wants us to dance, so you can give us some little thing like that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Some little, give a little holler. Get a little holler for Jesus. A little shout out to God. But all of a sudden, Mamakadaya, Manda, Moshian, Namekadaya, begins to develop in our emotions right out of the depths of our passions, right out of the depths of our, of our appetite and our ambitions. A divine explosion of God. Dunamis. Dunamis is a word that God uses for power. Dunamis is an explosion, a divine explosion. It's bigger than a nuclear one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's bigger than a star's explosion. Hallelujah. Um, God, the Holy Ghost is calling you into a place where he can reveal Jesus to you. He's calling you into a place where he can reveal Jesus Christ through you. You got to get out of being so fascinated with the fact that you can walk. Look, Dad, I can walk. <laughs> Look, Dad, I can roll. And everybody's so impressed with themselves. I can roll on the ground. It's like you know, Naomi. I can roll. <laughs> okay. I mean, all of her little tricks. They were just going, okay. To her, it's like this is a, a reason for a medal of honor, a badge of, of greatness. You know, we got to get out of this stuff. Amen. I laid my hands on somebody and they got healed. <laughs> Why are you surprised? This didn't even qualify as the works yet. Huh? Are you listening yeah. to me? Come on, people. Come on. I'm going to break you free from I want you to hate your life in this world. Yes. But Tom, I'm done talking to you tonight. I'm not a motivational speaker of how to love your life. I'm a motivational, motivational speaker on how to lose your life and have his because it's something greater. You've got to get past you to get to him. I said, you got to get past you to get to him. I said, you got to get past you to get to him. I said, you got to get past you to get to him. It's true. It's true. You got to get past you to get to him. Yes. Suddenly there begins, begins to be this divine hunger. Hallelujah. That the Holy Ghost puts in there to start with. So we call upon the name of Jesus and then he begins to develop it more and more to where you're so desperate, you'll do anything. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 
<laughs> then it's easy to get past yourself to get to him. Hallelujah. Oh, mama. It is Mondaya. You're losing your life is something that you see very always. It's not just, it is a one-time event in the sense that that's the thing that we do when we come to Jesus. But I've noticed over and again that people don't get that when they're coming to Jesus. And they've got to go through this process of learning that they're losing their life. I know they're supposed to lose their life. But in reality, every day, I am faced with the, with the, with the privilege of losing my life. That I might have his life. And, and I, in many respects, take that verse of Scripture. And for me, it's a synonym to denying yourself. If you want to go with God, if you want to learn how to walk with Him, if you want to learn how to live His life, that you've got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Him. I want to follow Jesus. In other words, I want to imitate Jesus. So there's a couple of things that I've got to be willing to do if I'm going to imitate Jesus. And a couple of things that I've got to be willing to do if I'm going to imitate Jesus is I've got to be willing to lose my life. I've got to be willing to go to a cross, as it were, literally, not with any purpose or assignment or, or, or design of ambition for myself, but to lay down my life for his divine purposes. Because that's what the cross is. That's what the cross represents. Jesus laying down his life for the divine purposes to do the will of God. It's, it's about, I'm not living my own life. I'm living, this, I'm living my life for you, Father. You can, whether I'm going to live another year or whether you're going to let me live, you know, another 50 years, whatever it is, it is not in my power. It's in your power. And I'm here to live fully for you. And I want to, I, everywhere we go, we, we see people, they want to do the works of Jesus. They want to imitate Jesus. They want to follow Jesus, but they don't want to take up the cross and they don't want to deny themselves. And those two things are running interference for you. They're blockades for you. They're giant hurdles, maybe mountains, maybe very, very high walls, maybe troops that you've got to run through. Maybe, maybe Jordans you've got to cross, maybe wildernesses that you must pass through. Because you become, you've developed your life around you and fit God into it um, and made God a partner on the job. Are you with me? Yeah. And don't even know it. But if you just started reading the script, Word of God in such a way to where all of a sudden you weren't making excuses for yourself anymore or just trying to fit God into the categories of your life. But you said, wait a minute, this is what he told me to do. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm not going to just say that I'm walking with God and I know God and I'm basically, you know, living opposite to him. Because First John's really all about that. First John says, if you say you know God and you don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. If you say that you know God and you got sin in your life, you're a deceiver and a liar. He says it over and again, yeah. over and again. You know, he, John really emphasizes 10 times, 10 times that the reality of the new birth, the new birth experience is that God is in us and we are in him. I mean, 10 times in the first epistle of John alone that uh, he declares oneness. We're in God. God is in us. And it might. He explodes this glorious life for us and says, how, really? He's saying, how, if, in this being the case, how could you be any other thing than righteous? How could you be any other thing than walking in the light? How could you be any other thing than those who obey God than those who do his will? How could you be any other thing? Are you with me? Yeah. How could you possibly fall out to demon spirits? How could you possibly be involved with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life? When, when you are, you've been made one with God, you're in Him. That is a wild idea. You know, I can almost like get the concept of He's in me. But now I'm over there in Him. Oh, this oneness, this living place of understanding and knowledge and wisdom and insight. My, I'm gonna lay hold on that. I, want, I don't wanna just have some intellectual concept of it. I wanna have a heartfelt revelation and experience of it. Can you hear me? Because yeah. I know some of you are just so out there and there's so many voices going on in your head right now. Your culture is screaming at you. Your decisions are so loud. I gotta get louder, try to talk over them. It's so hard to hear somebody talking over somebody else. God, the Holy Ghost, is here to help you tonight. Yes. Shoo, shoo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what he's going to do, he's going to show, he, he's not gonna, he doesn't really so much show us how to lose our life. He shows us Jesus. Because you start seeing Jesus talking about you and go, I want you. Huh? It's like seeing a pearl of great price or understanding a treasure in the field. 
Suddenly, you've got the motivation. You're like, ooh, Jesus, I get to be in you, you and me. I get to walk with you. I get to do what you do. What do I need to do? Take up my cross, deny myself? No problem. God, the Holy Ghost is here to do that for you tonight. The list of all that God, the Holy Spirit, is described to be for you and me is absolutely extraordinary. And we started in John chapter 14 and started walking through all that God, the Holy Ghost, is devoted to do for us. It is just, by the time we get to chapter 16, we're blown away and it's midnight. And I haven't got to Romans 8, 26 and 27. <laughs> I want you to grab a hold of Romans 8, 26 and 27 tonight, and I want you to believe how much God loves you. I want you to understand that God has poured His love in your heart by the Holy Spirit. I want you, yeah, you can have an affection with Him, and you couldn't live with Him for three years and not fall in love with Him because of the love that was there, the glory that was there, the splendor that was there. But something happened on the day of Pentecost that took that to a whole other dimension to where the, the loss was no longer even considered. The loss of the, the personal presence of Jesus was no longer consi considered because... The Lord sent another paraclete, and they, he, they didn't understand how it was expedient and how they were going to like it a whole lot more when he was saying it. But after they experienced it, it's like, whoa. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to say this, but it's like better than Jesus. <laughs> huh? Are you listening to me? Oh, 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 if I could just get you over here into believing this and camping around this fire for a while, hallelujah, and warming yourself and, 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 feeling the goodness and feeling the glory and understanding that this isn't some kind of obligation and labor when we go to prayer and when we go and we sit down to that which is spirit and life, the means by which God creates within us that which is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword as we give ourselves to the Word and it develops us spiritually and begins to train us in a realm of understanding who God is because we're stuck in the place of understanding who demon spirits are and controlled by them and so influenced by them People don't even know what it means to live free from sin. They think it's a fairy tale. They think it's a false doctrine. It's a chief doctrine of the scripture. And people are so warped in their own opinion of God. They think it's a false doctrine to believe that we're to live in righteousness and holiness. It's crazy. We live in an apostate world. And somebody's going to have to start moving to Jesus because I'm going to tell you right now, what captivated every one of them, every one of them, was the glory that surrounded him, Christ Jesus. And the miracles which he did, and the insights which he had. Nathaniel, who was called Bartholomew later, he says to Nathaniel, I saw you there under the tree. People, there's the word of knowledge is right there for you. God the Holy Ghost wants you to have it. He said he wants you to covet to prophesy. He wants you to be more desperate about prophesying than having some new Christmas present. Some new little shiny thing. So that you can play with it. Whatever <laughs> your thing is. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I'm sure some of you got the motion, some of you didn't. I mean, you just thought, wow, some weird gyrations he's doing. God, the Holy Ghost has come to reveal Jesus and come to make him known. He's come to show us something that's far more wonderful than all the other things that we've thought were good and that which we were attracted to and wanted to go after and we begin to covet them. And it's just nothing but idolatry. There's only one thing that you and I are supposed to be coveting. We're supposed to be coveting to prophesy. We want God to speak through us. I want to hear God speaking through me. I want a Holy Ghost flow through my life. I want to understand how to get there. Cross, deny yourself. Ooh. Really? Oh, really? Yes. That doesn't look good. Then you need to see Jesus. And then all of a sudden, having him becomes bigger to you than all the other concerns and obstacles and disappointments and challenges. Huh? Yes. Come on, people. Jesus. Many people have got to do this in their youth or they never get it done. I hate to say it. Many people got to do this in their youth or they never get it done. In your youth, you're willing to step out and basically go in debt for a quarter million dollars so you can have yourself a little house to live in. Radical. You're going to go into debt. You're going to go into debt. You're going to actually have a picture and a view of your life for the next 30 years. Wild. You know, you get a little older and all of a sudden you can't do that anymore. You're all, you're all tied up with your securities, which are insecurities. Huh? We're all tied up with the things that you depend upon which will perish with using. 
But God the Holy Ghost is here tonight. He never gives up. Amen. God the Holy Ghost is here tonight to renew your youth. God the Holy Ghost is here tonight to cause you to become a risk taker again. God's here. God the Holy Ghost is here tonight to cause you to become a dreamer in Him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, Jesus, I understand. I'm, somebody said to me, will you... Are you going to start slowing down? I'm speeding up. I, I was telling some people the other day, I said, man, you just understand, I have just gotten started. You think I have moved in faith at this point. Yet what God's getting ready to do for my life is going to look like I've been living in the shadows of doubt. Huh? Come on. We're getting ready to take it to a whole nother level. I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to have to start taking risks. You're going to have to start understanding total abandonment. You're going to have to start understanding there's this place in God that the Holy Ghost will come and show you that there are no limitations, that there are no restrictions, that whatever you ask, Papa, ye will do it. All he wants to bring you into is a place of complete consecration and commitment. You've got to get past yourself. For a lot of folks, getting past themselves is getting past their shame, their condemnation. Why? Because their whole life is about their value system. About how well am I doing now? Now how well am I doing? <laughs> it's like the little puppy. Every two seconds he's got to come, do you still love me? You know, that's what that's all about. Do you still love me? Do you still love me? Pet me. You know? Are you with me? Yes. Insecurities. Am I doing well now? No. You're doing terrible. Well, why? Because you're asking. <laughs> we want you to get into a place of security with God. It's overwhelmed with the love. You don't even need that no more. You and Him, you got all that you have need of. You're good. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> She's practicing pounding on the Bible to make her points. It's good. That's good, baby. That's good. That's just how Papa does it. That was good. Amen. He's following them that follow Jesus. Praise God. I'm so excited about what God's going to do with Anna's life. A lot of what I'm doing right now is I'm preaching to her. And if you can benefit, praise God. I'm going after tonight. I'm going after her. Sometimes we're, I focus on the people who are just hard-headed and stupid. Our just rebellion won't get it. And it's, it's a tough meeting. But it's got to be done. I wish we could do it in a private place, but it's hard to get in there. You know, but tonight I'm just really just focused on the people who God is willing to go with God, they're willing to respond to the Lord. He's calling you. you in a good spot. You're not some dead, frozen church that nobody wants to, you know, get excited about. God gives to the Spirit on restriction. God the Holy Ghost is on restriction. <laughs> Glorious liberty of the sons of God is in the place. Jesus is here. I feel him. I feel him right now. He's here. Hallelujah. Kushala Mokateya. Hallelujah. He'll let, God, he'll let God make you whatever he wants to make you. The other night I was in a meeting. It's the first time I was ever a slobbering prophet. I'm not kidding you. I, was, I had like a slobber coming down both sides. It was pretty wild. Yeah, I, there's such a strong anointing. I, mean, I never was a foamer at the mouth. Slobbering. Slobbering prophet. Spittle everywhere. I'll just be whatever God wants me to be. You know what? Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Nobody remembered because the place got mowed down by the power of God. It was mowed down. Hallelujah. 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 I was, we were in a place the other night and... It, it was in, there was a lot of folks there and all of the leaders. The, the first, first of all, the catchers were pretty, pretty confident. But then the catchers become, under the Holy Ghost conviction, began to fall down and say, and begin to confess their sins. It was powerful. Pray for me. I want this thing broken off of my life. The leaders of the church hid in the altar. I'm going, praise <laughs> God. There is a place where Holy Ghost conviction can work. Everybody not sitting around going, high-fiving their self. High-fiving their big self. You know what I'm saying? Come on, people. We all excited about nothing. Come on, it's time to get excited about God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's time to begin to press in and hunger. You know, the Lord is beginning to speak to me. I told you, I'm beginning to express to you some things that the Spirit of the Lord has been expressing to me 
about the reality of stepping over into a place of broken and neediness so that you can move into lowliness and meekness. And when you move into lowliness and meekness, I'm going to tell you right now, the ministry of Jesus can begin to be displayed. Hallelujah. You can tell who's the most anointed. They're the folks that walk in the most love and servitude. That's the way God brings it down. Father has not made an elite class. He's made an elect. And there's, a, there, there's just, look, you can pretend all you want. You can say all you want. You can describe all you believe and all you think about yourself. But there is something that's bigger than that. It's the manifestation of the Holy Ghost, uninterrupted, allowed to flow through you that we're looking for. Who comes to reveal Jesus. Whew. Hallelujah. It's better. Yeah, you're going to, yeah, I know temptation comes at us. It comes at us strong. It comes at us hard. It comes at us heavy. But you know what? Father, give you the ability to endure temptation because on the other side of it, angels come and minister to you. I know trials and circumstances can press against our soul and it look like there is absolutely no way that it's going to get done. And the enemy comes and chimes in on that and tries to tell us how we're not going to make it, how we're, somehow we're going to die. And it's not even a convincing story. It's not even a convincing lie, but somehow we believe it. It's not even a convincing story. It's going to make any sense. And yet we overwhelmed by it, losing sleep over it. Huh? Getting on in a sorrowful state can't be happy because we're believing some crazy illogical lie about what's going to happen to us. Jesus, please. <laughs> but he's not going to do anything else. I mean, we can, we can beg him, come do it now. He says, no, believe. Believe my word. Believe what I've said. And now that that, I'll do exploits through your life. Whew. Huh. Hallelujah. 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 You know, after, who, ha, huh, me. Jesus is here, whether you recognize him or not. Almighty God's in the place. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's in this place and in my place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> when God's tabernacle and in you, you in heaven. I don't know what other kind of reasoning power you have, but I'm going to tell you right now, that is just the way it is. God tabernacling in you, you in heaven. If you in God, I'm telling you, you in heaven. I don't know how you think rationally, but according to the word of God, you in him and he's in you, and that means it's good all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you just got to quit believing on the other reports. And all the things that you have submitted yourself to. You submitted yourself to a culture. You submitted yourself to a program run by the society that we live in. That is where you've allowed your value systems to be developed. You say, no, 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 no. The mortgage is coming around. The rent is coming around. And that's truth. No, it's not. It's something you've submitted to. It's an idol you've bowed to. Nothing to do with reality. It is not in heaven. Jesus didn't do it. And it's not written in the Bible. Are you listening to me? Therefore, it is not true. It is something you've submitted yourself to that is propagated by the spirit of this world. And it's a value system that is dis misplaced. God's got a whole other realm. You begin to think about how that realm of his supply worked out in the life of the people of Israel. The way God designed it to make them the head and not the tail. To make them, to give them such great increase. To give them such provision. To give them such inheritance. As they walked with him and obeyed him. And did those things which he described for them to do. He became the one who was the provider for everything that they had need of. It was a culture and a society created by God. It's very different than what people are trying to live in right now and raise their families and say they got to do it and somehow write God in on it because it's part, supposedly part of the family thing. It's not part of the family thing. It's not part of the family thing. So it's, part, it's a part of the cares of this life, the seed and the riches and pleasures of this world. And the Lord says to you and me, he says, seek the kingdom. Go after the things of the kingdom. Father says it's a good pleasure to give us the things of the kingdom. What is that? That's heaven. That's all of his blessings. That's all of his divine provision. That's all of his, the giftings of the Holy Ghost. That's all the realms of faith. That's all the realms of his supernatural supply in every dimension of life. Spirit, soul, body, in becoming, you know, rich and wealthy, as it were, in every dimension of life. To prosper, even as your soul prospers. To be in health. Huh. Come on, people. 
That is a direct result of coming into Father's culture, seeking the things of the kingdom, which he delights to give to us, which he's actually equated to giving us, he's equated it, having the kingdom of God, to receiving the Holy Ghost. So if you receive the Holy Spirit, you're supposed to receive the kingdom of God, which is then the place of all divine provision. And what happens, we trick ourselves, we get over into trusting in the arm of flesh, we call it God's provision. And don't recognize that the Lord said, cursed is every man who trusts in the arm of flesh. Somebody said, how do I get out of this? How do I begin to understand this? You just begin to obey God, take up your cross and deny yourself and follow him. That's how you get out of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to get on your face before the Lord and say, Father, I want you to use me in the kingdom. I want to understand how to begin to be that one who is uh, evangel fire lit up by the Holy Ghost to go into all the world and preach the gospel beginning right here in my own hometown to live your life, to walk in the Spirit. You know, in Romans chapter 8, here in verse 26 and 27, the Lord's laid out, He's laid out this beautiful life. He's described the beautiful life starting with that there's therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Holy Ghost. Tells us about the laws of the Spirit of life that are in Christ Jesus. Lays out all these wonderful things to us. Describes what it means, what it looks like to be in the Spirit, that we're of, this, of the Holy Ghost and in the Holy Ghost, born of Him and in Him, not in the flesh but in Him describes to us that this is the proof that we are the sons of God in that context of being the sons of God and walking in the Spirit. He tells us that that's where we're the heirs of God and co-inheritors with Christ Jesus, which is the flow of all divine provision because we're seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. We're not seeking for our own prosperity. We're not going after our own food. We're not our own provider. We're not the provider of everybody else around us. Are you listening to me? Yes. God is the source of our provision. And, that's, and thus we have made what those things that He's described to be first and foremost in our life, first and foremost. As a result, He provides for us all of these riches and all this wealth and all this provision that He described in Matthew chapter 6. And it's right there seen walking in the Spirit in Romans chapter 8 verses 14 through 17. He's describing it to us that we just don't get it. He gives us the wisdom and the insight to do it with them, but we don't get it. Why? Because we just hear it, we intellectualize it, and it's never put into practice. It's never become walking faith. It's never become living faith. It's an ideology. It's philosophy and it won't profit you it won't profit you because there's people that are sitting around they've had the gospel minister to them they know all the word they can preach the word to you they declare the word to you but it's never been mixed with faith in them it's never been mixed with the activity of risking and doing it and stepping out watch Abraham look watch him step out look look what it means to step out and go with God and I pray Tonight, that you be you will allow the Holy Spirit to show you how to do that. Yes. You'll allow the Holy Spirit to show you how to make God truly first, to where you live for Him, where you earn money for the kingdom of God. I'm going to put it down to that to that measure and, and, and through that expression because it really all of a sudden causes people to think a little bit more about their life and who they're spending their money on and who they're spending their time on and where their trust really is and where the value of their life really is. What you need to do is you need to, get your, you need to go get your, your, your magnetic sign and put it on your car and quit just sitting being a listener and start being a doer and recognize that it's not God speaking into the air. He's looking for people who we can talk to and they'll begin to move in faith. And you put it, uh, this, um, this little uh, you know, magnetic sign on your, on your car that says, Taxi cab to heaven. Yeah, that's right. Over here, two giggles. Three of them were nervous. I went three, three giggles, two of them were nervous. Everybody else is. <laughs> I'm busy, exactly. Don't have time, exactly. I don't see it as my ministry, exactly. <laughs> so, you have to get past those things before you're ever going to begin to labor because it's going to be a labor. You're going to have faithfully labor at doing something. You'll faithfully labor at reaching the lost before you'll have souls. You'll faithfully labor. You won't give up just because, you know, you went for two months and nobody showed up and it was just you. Huh? And you had to preach in the mirror to yourself. Don't do that. Have a prayer meeting. Walk around and cry out to God because I tell you right now, prayer will change things. You can get into a relationship with God when you're doing His will that whatever you ask Him, He will begin to produce it supernaturally through your life. But He's going to prove faithfulness. He's going to evaluate motive. He's going to try you. 
You say, if I bless him, his head will get so big he won't listen to nobody. That means you've got to wait 10 years. Hello. Because by the tries of he looks at how possessive we be. Our people become so sniff territorial, so possessive. And I'm not going to go into the sniff thing. You'll just have to figure it out on your own. As soon as they put it down in there, there, I, I know some ministries were telling me, no, we have four worship teams. What do you have four? So that, be, so that we can deal with the territorialism of this is mine. I'm tired of fighting the music. I mean, we have you say that. We, we, we rotate who's going to do leadership in the various different ministries because even the even the, the nursery, people become territorial about the nursery. I mean, well, how can you become territorial about the nursery? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, if I give somebody an assignment and they've got, they got seven to eight, the seven to eight-year-olds is theirs and everything that happens to them is credited to them and they are so territorial that it's a fight. i got to deal with the fight. It's a stinking spirit of, de of darkness. How can God ever use anybody when they're so they're so possessive? They're not a giver. They've never learned how to give. It's all about mine. It's mine, 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 right. mine, <laughs> mine. <laughs> huh? If I had fangs, it would really work. Right? Mine. You need to learn how to let go. Yours. Yes. So you can have his. Yes. And praise God, the Holy Ghost is here to help <laughs> you. <laughs> no, I wish what I was telling you was just make believe and I was just making up trying to make a point. I'm not. And if you get a high school ministry, you heady. Because if there's anything going on, it's because of you. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are we supposed to build an altar to you and offer sacrifices? Are we supposed to write songs and worship you? Because that's the dynamic of it. It really becomes that, and it literally exists throughout the church. This strife, this envy, this pride of life, this territorialism, this greed, this thing that says, I did it, it's mine. God, the Holy Ghost can never move there. Come on. He can never move there. He can never move there. You're too good. For God. You're too great for Him. You've already got it all put together. You can't rely upon God like a man like Solomon said, I don't know how to go in or go out. I don't have enough wisdom or insight to do anything. God says, look at that. I can move in that. Yes. So many people, they got it all put together. It's nothing but the pride of life. And it's just, and with it, it's got to come all the rest of the stuff. And it's got to become an enemy. You gotta hate that thing. God wants to teach you how to truly hate evil and love righteousness. To hate iniquity, to hate the consequences of it, the activity of it. To give you the wisdom and the insight to see the destructiveness of it. So many people, they want Jesus, but there's a couple of things they gotta deal with before they can have him. It's true. There's a couple of other interests that they hold more dear to themselves than him. And when it comes to the offering to basket time, it really gets revealed. I pray that every one of you understand that the value is not in you giving finances in to the church. The value is in you letting go of it and you learning how to worship God with that which you value above everything else. Just about. There's a few other things that most people will value above money. They'll value, you know, we know that you value your life above money. Somebody puts a gun to your head and says, give me all your money, you're going to give it to them. You'll be huffing and puffing the dial 911, but nonetheless, you're going to give it to them. But when you've given your life to Jesus, it's proven because all of your money is given to him too. Huh? Because when he has your life, he's got all of your stuff. And when he doesn't have all your stuff, it's just a proof that he doesn't have all of your life. You've just been able to rationalize it in a way that you've convinced yourself that you're good, but the truth comes and beckons and knocks at your door and says, no, 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 no. You're going to have to let go of these things. God wants you to learn how to give. He wants you to learn how to worship Him. He wants you to, because you're trained in it. Hallelujah. 
He'll train you how to hear him. He'll train you how to move with him. He'll train you how to let go of your life. He'll train you how not to be filled with yourself. He'll train you not to have possessiveness, not to have territorialism, not to have a bunch of pride of life, not to hold on to your own life, but to let it go. He trains us. He develops us in faith to be able to trust him when we step out beyond the range and, uh, and the reaches of, of, of that which we can do and say, wait a minute, all of a sudden now I'm not only just giving that which I can afford, I'm giving my very living. I'm giving that which I live by, like the woman with the two mice. She didn't just give, just, she didn't just give out of her convenience, out of what she had left over, but she gave the very means by which she was going to have the next meal to eat. Somehow, service to God and worshiping God became more important to her than her food. Look at that. Jesus is pointing that out. He's not pointing it out just for no reason at all. He's saying, this is it. This is touching my heart. This is the reality. She gave more than all of them. It's touching his heart. You can understand it. There's a faith developed there. There's a relationship there. There's a trust there. It still isn't even on the level of God saying to Abraham, Abraham, leave everything behind. Leave your family, leave everything, leave your job, leave your security, leave your house. Everything. And come go with me to a place that I'm not going to tell you where we're going until we get there. Hallelujah. Talk about learning how to walk with God. Talk about learning how to live in Him, trusting Him. Talk about going to greatness when you're willing to do it. Look, he said, there's an example. we got all these examples. Oh, we've got all these witnesses. We've got all these models of faith. Will we go with them? Will we, with total abandonment, go with them? I'm telling you, there's, there's cities to reach. I tell you, there's community, there's towns, there's villages. Ah, yeah. yeah. hallelujah. You don't know what to do? Come ask me. I'll give you a thousand options. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to go have and go pick up this tent, this 5,000 square foot tent. I'm going to start taking it. I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to head up towards, I'm going to go, I'm going to start head up the state of Oregon up into Washington on the east of the Cascades. I'm going to come back around on the west of the Cascades down the coastline. I'm going to the circuit. I'm going to watch what God's going to do. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to sit around and wait for somebody else to get a vision. It's like the men of God said, we don't have time to develop faith in people. They're just too heady. They're just sitting around listening. It takes, it takes 15 years to get them to praise. 20 years to get them to rejoice. 25 to get them to dance, praise, and rejoice. <laughs> and that's where we begin. We just don't have time to develop faith. People got their own interest. They got their own fish to fry. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Huh? And I don't want you to, anybody in this place to be that. No. I don't want you to be entrusted with something from heaven. And you say, look, I had other interest. So I took that which you gave to me and I hid it here in the earth so that when you return you may have that which belongs to you. And he says, you wicked servant. You wicked servant. You lived your own life. And it's Jesus so many ways and so many different stories tried to describe to us the terrible consequence of us living our own life. You don't have to stress over it. God the Holy Ghost is here to help, God the Holy Ghost is here to help you. Huh? But somebody's going to have to listen. Somebody's going to have to cooperate. Someone's going to have to move with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone's going to have to develop in a realm of faith that recognizes, wait a minute, I've got the blessing of God upon me. Hallelujah. I've got God first. Name what? If you don't have, if you can't say that I, listen, if you don't can't say that you have the blessing of God on all your things because you are faithful in tithes and offerings, you don't have a leg to stand on when Satan comes, tries to put upon you poverty and destruction and thievery and stealing from you. You don't have a leg to stand on. When you obey God, you're walking with God and you're keeping Him first in that basic area because it's, it's important. It's important to God. People don't want to make it important to them. But it's important to the Father. It's important to the Father all the way back to the days of Abraham. It's important to God with Jacob. It's important to God with Israel. It's important to God in Malachi. It's the only means by which we are allowed to prove God. Yes. Honor God. Bring all of the tithes and offerings in the storehouse. Prove Him. See if he won't open up the windows of heaven, pour out more than you can contain. Oh, people, you're going to have to hear this. 
Because there's, listen, some of you have been radically sowing. I don't want anybody to lose their harvest. Amen. Why don't you start drawing back through unbelief? People draw back. They draw back through unbelief. You just keep on. You keep moving forward in God. You keep giving. Yes. Huh? Amen. You keep giving in every dimension of your life. I mean, because it, it's just this altar that we built. Somebody said, well, can you go in and basically, you know, do some fundraisers? No, I'm talking about an altar. I'm not about altar. You can only do this. This is sacred. You can't do no fundraisers here. This is an altar that you built. It's an altar of worship. <laughs> I never am here before him empty-handed. And thus I'll always have the flow of prophecy. Huh? Hallelujah. I'll always have the flow of divine provision. I always had the flow of the Holy Ghost. It's not because it's bought and paid for. It's because it's yielded to and received. Hallelujah. It's a simple cooperation of obedience with God that results in a miracle of those things which he's doing. God, the Holy Ghost, is here working with us, teaching us, bringing these things into our remembrance, leading us and guiding us into all truth, taking everything that belongs to the Father and belongs to the Lord Jesus, revealing it to us, showing us Jesus, glorifying Jesus, being the helper, being the comforter, being the one that is there with us and in us, being the one that causes us to understand the Word of God that unveils to us the life that God has called us to live. And then that brings us to... You know, I, I didn't really get all the way up to 26 and 27 yet, but I'm almost there. Are you got your Bibles there? I'm just kind of giving you an overview. Yes. Trying to help understand it. We're not, as, we're not over here, you know, just trying to sermonize. We're talking to you. Yes. Amen. We're talking to your issues. We're talking about your, your, your mountains. Your walls, your imprisonment, your limitations that you agreed to. God gives us the wisdom and understanding how to move with him. And if we don't obey him and do it his way, we'll never have his blessings. We'll never have the supernatural provision, the supernatural results that he has promised. We'll never be those who are wise enough to win souls. We'll never be those who are understanding of the things of the Spirit enough to learn how to move and then the miraculous to be able to speak the wisdom of God. You know, you hear, hear as everybody's watching Jesus, oh, what a mighty word. What a word of wisdom. What a word of insight. As they behold how he cast out devils. They were stunned. It's such a mighty word that proceeded forth from his mouth. That's the ministry of Jesus that you and I are supposed to have that is shocking all to everyone. With the word of authority, he commands the unclean spirits and they listen to him. One mighty word indeed. That's his ministry. Hello? Yes. We're willing to have something less and, and high five each other and you know, brag on ourselves. You should have been here. You should have saw what happened? We got happy. <laughs> Wonderful. You should have been here. It was amazing. It was amazing. What happened? Everybody was raising their hands and smiling. <laughs> help us. Eh? And praise God, the Holy Ghost is here to help yeah. us here tonight. Yeah. He's here to help us. He's here to help us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Ha. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do verses, verses 18 through 25 right now. I'm just going to skip over that because I get lost in that. Huh? But just go ahead and look at verse 26 and verse 27, Romans chapter 8. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. Yeah. Ooh, Mandea Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's, the Lord says, the Holy Ghost helps our weaknesses. Are you happy? Yes. Yes. Huh? 
But why remain weak and pathetic all your life? Why live weak and pathetic and die weak and pathetic? Born weak and pathetic, lived weak and pathetic, died weak and pathetic. I mean, why not let's just go from streak to streak? Why not let's go from glory to glory? Why not let's go from greatness to greatness? Why not we go from every dimension of the fullness of Jesus Christ in every area of our life, in our health, in our finances, in the spiritual development, in signs and wonders, tongues become more rich, interpretation becomes more regular, prophecy more continuous, miracles, signs and wonders continually building and growing to greater heights and, and dimensions. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The love of God, the joy of God, the peace of God, more, 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 more fluid in our lives, like rivers. Amen. Instead of garden hoses. See, every once in a while, it's spotty, like rain in Southern California. My goodness gracious. If we had to depend upon Southern California's rain supply to feed ourselves, we would be eating fish all the time till we ran out of that. Huh? Are you listening to me? Oh, come on, people. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Is there a flow from heaven continually falling on you? Do you feel the rain of heaven continually falling on you? If you're not, your fields are dry and ugly. Your life is barren. Like a wasteland. Oh, don't you? Everybody loves to drive out into the country and see the nice lush green. How many would like to go by and just see that parched dry land? It is really impressive. Oh, let's stop, pull over. Let's look at the parched dry land. It's beautiful. <laughs> Nobody's pulling over to look at the parched dry land. <laughs> we pulling over to look at the green rolling hills and fields, right? Look, why would we want to be a parched land? No, one wanted, no one's interested. We need rain. We need rain. The rain of his presence. You need rain. You're not going to have any rain until you start calling for it, until you get yourself a mouth for God instead of a mouth for everybody else. They even turn into blabbermouths when they're when, when they talking among themselves. Just, just talking, talking, talking. Get all happy outside the meeting. Many, many times I walked out to church, saw somebody sitting there like a sour puss the whole time at the meeting all dried up and bent up on themselves. And you walk outside the church and they're out there laughing and having a good time, slap happy. You think, I just get in my car. And I can't even deal with this. Shame on them. They're happy about everything but Jesus. They're full of everything but God. What they're excited about has nothing to do with the movings of the Spirit. You're never going to have these things. Until you begin to pay attention to the Holy Ghost who's come. He's come to help our weakness. He will not force us. He's a gentleman, but he's come to help us. He's come to guide us. He's come to lead us. But he's not going to grab us by the ear like mama and pull us into the room. We've got to be willing to walk with him. We've got to be willing to follow him. We've got to be willing to go with him. Look at here. He's come to help our weaknesses. He's come to help us in the areas where we're easily tripped up. He's coming to help us in the areas where we're not fortified in the, in the areas of discipline and character. He's come to help us. People that are, still go ahead and like to sneak around. He's come to help us. People who are still living in a fantasy, they don't have a visual on Jesus. He's come to help us. For we, know, we do not know how to even pray as we should. We don't even know how to open up our mouth. That is the wisdom and insight. God wants to make us mighty in word and deed. He wants, to be able, he wants people to sit around and go, Oh, what a word of power and authority. I love that verse of scripture in Luke chapter 4. What I believe is verse 32. Oh, what a word of power and authority. For even he commanded the unclean spirits and they obeyed him. Those were his enemies talking. Oh, my, my, my. This is, this is the ministry of Jesus. This is the works of Jesus. Come on, people. Yes. Come on. These things are supposed to make you desperate. It's supposed to make you hungry. It's supposed to make you broken and needy before yes. God. When you begin to look at Him and say, Lord, I see who you are. I see what you want. We get all broken sometimes and needy over disobedience and over rebellion, and you should. should be repentive. Huh? 
You would think I'm supposed to be here to make them feel good about themselves and accommodate their life. No, I'm calling you to repentance. Hallelujah. I'm calling you to a place of brokenness and neediness. Hallelujah. I'm calling you a place of truth and reality. This is what the Holy Ghost has come to do. We don't even know how to pray for, uh, for ourselves. We don't have the wisdom. We don't have the insight. We don't even know how to begin to articulate the basic will of God. I mean, we're, I mean come on. Just because we're such losers and pathetic, the Lord still loves us. Are you with me? You guys don't even know how to pray. So I'm going to help you. You don't even know how to ask right for yourself. You don't even know what you need. I mean, James put it this way. All you do is ask amiss. You, all you, when you talk to God, you just ask whatever it is you think you need. And you make it consume it in your own interest, your own desires, your own will. That's what he's saying. I know, many, I know King James translated it, consuming your own lust. Talk about your will, your desires. Just to bring it right down so it's not the devil, it's you. I know we want to always blame everything on the bad boy, but it's you. <laughs> you <listen to> <laughs> it don't take you long to get an agreement with him. He'll take over from there. You know what I'm saying? Because he's a ruthless tyrant. He ain't going to ask permission. He can come and force himself on us. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise God for the limitations. Huh? Praise God for the, bear, the boundaries that he sets upon the, upon the devil and says you can only come this far, no further. I will not allow anyone to be tempted above or tested above what they're able. But I'll make a way of escape them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plead with you. I'm going to do with you. I'm going to... I mean, people and people act like they're trying to talk God into doing it. God tried to talk you in and listening. <laughs> oh, God, what is it? What's wrong? Please. <laughs> when are you going to come? When are you going to do it? <laughs> you know, I don't think we even get a reaction out of him with that. Because, <laughs> it, you know, it's like impossible to please God without faith. I think it's impossible to get him to react without faith. It's really, Father, to shine the floodlight of heaven upon my soul and show me how to understand, have the wisdom and insight to begin to cooperate with you, how to move past myself, how to be willing to consecrate my life, take up my cross so that I can get at you, so I can begin to interact with you, so I can begin to follow you, so I can begin to hear you, so I can begin to move with you, so I can begin to obey you, so I can understand how to move in supernatural things, so I can see the spiritual dimension of my life begin to be developed and mature and strengthened by simple obedience to your word and cooperation with the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is praying. We'll get to verse 35 and we'll find out Jesus is praying too. Yeah. But just to stay right here in verse 26, he's praying for you because you don't even know what to say. And what does he do? What does the scripture say here in verse 26? He makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So, you know, there's a lot of people who say, well, this, he must be talking about... He must be talking about the utterances of, of, the, of the language of the Spirit. I don't believe he's talking about the utterances of the language of the Spirit because he says it can't be uttered. So it's not an utterance. So when I look at these verses, when I look at this word groanings, I understand it to mean deep longings, deep, desperate desires. I believe God produces within us a hunger, a longing, a deep thirst, a deep neediness. He wants to create and produce within us something that's so beautiful. God, brokenness and contrition. A broken and contrite heart. We, he will begin to bring to us truth and say, look, you're not, so, you're, not so, you're not so special. I know your mama told you you were special. I know your teachers told you you were special. Your spouse was telling you how special you are, but you're not really that special. And you're like, for years, I'm not? No, you're not. Really? No. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> And there's the back and forth going on. <laughs> the encounters with God is absolutely essential. We've got to have an encounter. We've got to be having an environment, creating an environment, participating with an environment, having an encounter with God. We've got to get into yeah. this. We've got to get into the big midst of this. Yeah. Hey, listen, somebody said, well, look, Job had the encounter with God. Why can't I have an encounter with God? Why don't you get yourself in the same situation Job was in? Why don't you go ahead and be God's champion in the earth? Why don't you go ahead and walk with God in such a way that there's nobody even can compares to you in the way that you walk with God? 
the way that you take care of the orphans, the way that you take care of the needy, the way that you take care of the widow, the way that you attend to everybody's needs. It's Job. He's, you can talk about all that he did in his consecration to being, as it were, in God's stead before men. Think about it. Somebody said, why can't I have an encounter like Isaiah had? Get yourself in the same position. Get yourself in the same, at the same business that Isaiah was in. You'll have an encounter. Because it's there that all of a sudden your beauty and your comeliness turns into corruption. Suddenly it's there where you begin to encounter him. That you say, woe is me, I'm undone. Wait a minute, I'm really in need over here. Praise God, the Holy Spirit comes and invades our life when we're in need. When we all of a sudden recognize we have such a great need that we can do nothing without him. When we begin to understand that God the Father is the husbandman, Christ Jesus the vine, we the branches, and the Lord said unless we bring forth the fruit which he demands, he will take and remove us far from him. He will remove us. Read it again. That's verse 2. Read it. If we don't bring forth that which he demands, the fruit which he demands, his way, his life, that which pertains to the very life of God, the very life of Jesus. We will be taken away, removed from him. Well, that should be a motive. That should begin to create a brokenness and a neediness. The inability to get past addictions, to get past reoccurring sin, that should create a brokenness and a neediness. How are you listening to me over here? I mean, in the midst of that, and the brokenness and the contrition there, just in that place of brokenness and neediness, God says, I will not despise it. I'll come, I'll move into that place. And the beautiful thing about it is, is he's already moved into our life. He's, we've let him move into our life. There's a, there's a certain level of brokenness and neediness that has already been expressed in our life. Otherwise, he would have never moved in. But Father wants, to, Father wants something even greater because what's going to happen is he's going to be able to then develop through our lives and express through our life his servitude and his love, the expressions of his nature, his glory, of his beauty. There's a security there where all we want is those things that belong to that which he is and what, what he's doing and his joy, his peace, his love, his goodness. The Holy Ghost is there praying and interceding with groaning which cannot be uttered. He's, put, he's, he's the one who's developing within us a deep longing for heaven. A deep longing for the, to do the will of the Father. Deep neediness. Verse, 20, verse 27. He that searches the hearts. Who's that? He that searches the hearts. I believe it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people have different things. But I believe it's Jesus who stands searching the hearts of men. I believe I can show you verses of Scripture over and again. It helps you understand it. He stands standing there, searching the heart. What is he searching? What does it mean he's searching the heart? He's trying us. He's looking at what point we're going to say no. That doesn't stop the interaction of God with us. He just begins to develop us. He says, no, no, you, gotta, you have to understand this is for your good. You have to be willing to do this, otherwise I can't use you. You have to be willing to do this, otherwise you've got an open door for Satan to run through your life and begin to destroy everything that you are and everything that you have, and especially the relationship that exists between you and myself. He searched the heart. He tries the hearts. He tries the reins in the hearts of men. Every place in my life, every place in your life, we want to be just sitting, standing there going, yes, Lord. I'll say yes, yes, yes. We would have said, yes, what is it? What did you have? What, what would you have me do, Lord? I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. I'll be whatever you want me to be. Give all of your money in the offering. No. What about I'll be anything you want me to be? I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. The poor of Kashmir. The poor of Cuba. The poor of the nations that have not heard. Father, I'm looking for Father to give me special wisdom and insight on how to fill that tent up everywhere it goes. I don't want to be the only one doing it. And I don't know if I'm going to get to do it. I've got a vision for it. Somebody's going to do it. I'm going to get the thing started. Somebody's going to do it. Because I know 
Father's having me do other things right now and I can only do so many things because there's only so many hours in a day, only so many days in a week. Huh? Only so many weeks in a year. And there's only so many more years left in my life. But we can get people out of whatever it is they're doing and start getting them to follow holy, unto, holy to God. Because if you don't follow holy, if you won't respond to God holy, follow God with complete surrender right where you're at right now, you can never get over there. You'll never get there. God will ultimately take you there supernaturally because you respond to him here. If you don't respond to him here, you will be here for the rest of your life. And if you think that's being a champion for God, I've got news for you. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. Of course, if you go ahead and build the church and you, you know, do like other people have done, you bringing souls in by the thousands, fine. Okay, well, praise God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you are being a champion in the house. But if you're just sitting there. Huh? And you can sit, if, if count on one hand how many people God has used you to bring into the kingdom and see established in the things of the kingdom. I'd say that's called to get broken and, and needy. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you think? Forehead nods. 20 yeses. Jesus. I'm just going to try to minister you and to you and preach you into hunger. Hunger bring change. Mass migrations of people take place because of hunger. Did you know that? People who would have never left the territory that they lived in and grew up in, but because of famine, because of hunger, they'll leave everything that they have. They'll leave their house. They'll leave the land that their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, their great-great-grandparents, and their ancestors as far back as they know. They'll leave and they'll go wherever they can find the food because hunger will compel them to forsake all for it to supply that need. God and the Holy Spirit's here tonight to produce change in your life yes. through hunger. Yes. To deep longings. Isn't he wonderful? Yes. Did anybody know that God the Holy Ghost has been praying for you lately? Yes. Hallelujah. He's not only praying for, for you, he's praying through you. Because yes. this is a very, 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 very important part. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 14 says, He that prays in an unknown language does not speak unto men, but speaks unto God. How, how is it? How be it? Or, this is what's actually taking place. The Holy Ghost is, is speaking mysteries through you. Divine mysteries. Divine secrets. Things that you don't understand. Things that you don't know. Here he is right there interceding. The Spirit of the Son is on the inside of us crying out, Abba, Father. Look, the Spirit of the Son, the Holy Ghost. It's another name for the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Son is there on the inside making these cries and these pleas and these beckonings of God. I'm your child. I'm your son. You're my father. That relationship cry, that, that, that bond of, of, of family relationship. And we got it made. <laughs> What would happen if we begin to become that much more cooperative with that which God the Holy Ghost is doing, that which the Spirit of the Son is crying out? Huh? What about us Stadim Bradaya? Begins to become a flow, that it becomes a strengthening power, that which builds us up, that which strengthens, not only praying for us or developing with us, developing in us a longing, a hunger, a thirst, and a thirsting, a passion, a brokenness, a neediness towards God. Because that's what's going to get us past whatever thing that's got us stuck. But he begins to cry, cry out this expression of divine utterance that causes us to be strengthened on the inside, causes us to, builds us up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Causes us to excel, to lay hold on, move in, understand the flow of heaven, the movings of the Spirit of the Lord. Sipandro 
Spirit of the Lord begins to speak to us through others around us, like I'm speaking to you right now, speaking directly into our spirit. Things that go bypass your head, goes right into your heart, begins to produce within you divine appetite, begins to strengthen you. To say, okay, I'm going to respond with, to God. I'm going to begin to move with God. I'm going to give a greater place to Him. I'm going to give greater authority to Him in my life. I'm going to allow Him to show me how to live my life. I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to, I'm going to learn how to, with total abandonment, get past my fears tomorrow morning when I wake up and live my day for Jesus. Where somebody at my job actually knows that I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Because I'm not walking around under a demonic gag order anymore, afraid to still remandare que si la mandare, or to thank God or to praise Him for His goodness in the, in the workplace Amen. or wherever, in every place. Amen. Somehow I'm going to be able to move over into a place of the ministry of Jesus where there's a word of authority in my, in my mouth that I see people that are hurting and tormented and lost and confused. I know where they're at. I've got enough relationship with them that I understand who's ready to receive the gospel, who's ready to hear the word of life. You're going to have to enter into the harvest because Father's right now laboring, saying, my goodness, I need some, I need some laborers. <laughs> the Lord of the har harvest is looking for laborers. How many of you went this morning and picked up people and put them in your car? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Would you just raise your hand one more time? I just want to look at you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of the Father, on behalf of Christ Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, thank you so much. <laughs> I pray that you'll hear God's word and quit acting like he's not talking. Because whatever you do, however you respond to me, is how you respond to him. However serious you take me, is how you serious you take him. What you, how, you, how you begin to move in direction and strategic assignments as it's going forth to, through my mouth is how you will move with the word of God that has spoken to you. It's, it's all revealed, dear people. It's all revealed. Quit playing games with God. Quit playing make-believe. Quit giving all of your excuses because none of them matter. Two days before you breathe out your last breath, if you're having a Holy Ghost meeting, as you lay there dying. If you die and it comes upon you suddenly, so quickly that you don't even know what's happening. It's just, you're just having, my friend earlier this year just started having intense chest pains. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't know that within the next few minutes he was going to be dead. What a quick transition. One second after you transition out of this life, all your excuses won't matter anymore. All your reasons, why not? Why you didn't obey? Why didn't you move with God? Well, it won't matter anymore. I'm not saying it's going to, you're going to miss out on heaven for it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you're going to miss out. It's going to be tough to be, it's going to be, tough to be in the kingdom of God without a crown. When everybody else got one. Hello. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. You don't get no crown of righteousness. You got in here by the skin of your teeth, by the mercies of God. You didn't even live that way. You think about it. Think about it. Should the Lord be so merciful? And I can see it. A bunch of saints walk around without any crowns. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible? How many of you are happy with that? No. You don't think that the Lord's going to give out rewards based upon how you and I obeyed. So you need to go back and read the Bible again. Are you happy with that? You're happy having something here for a short period of time, you know, and, and, and take boast in it, but willing to live all eternity, bareheaded. You know what I'm saying? No crown to cast before his feet. At least you get to bow down. I hope I'm provoking you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm provoking you. Yeah. I'm hoping you're going to live big for God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping you step into the arena of the kingdom of God, and Father says, yeah, this person gave his whole life for the things of the kingdom. Here's a person, they just lived. They, they, they just lived in their job to supply everything that was needed in the realms of that church and that ministry that I put them in. God, who searches the hearts, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Knows what the Holy Ghost is praying. 
is what the Holy Ghost is thinking. You know, can you ever see the Holy Ghost got his arms around you, arm around you, and he's looking at the Father like desperate? Like, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. We've done everything we can do. <laughs> huh? 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 Hello. We know exactly what the Holy Ghost is praying because of what it says at the very end of that verse. We know what exactly what he's interceding about. He's interceding about the will of God being done in our life. Christ Jesus who searched the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for us according to the will of God. Really, it's according to God. And we know what the will of God is for our life. He's described what it is. I want you to stand with me, but I don't want you to get too, too caught away with yourself while you're standing. <laughs> Just stand in the presence of the Lord because I want you to be able to move. I want you to be able to make a transition. I want you to understand God, the Spirit, wants to make you trend, makes you, uh, cause you to make a transition from your mind into the mind of Christ and the mind of the Spirit, from you doing your will to His will. Father wants you to actually break barriers in the realms of the prophetic to go into the places of the word of knowledge and prophetic that no one is even going into. He wants to, but you're going to have to clear out your head for a little bit. You have to change your desires. To match his. You have to. You have to begin to get quiet enough before the Lord that your head is not so filled with all the self-interest ideas of what about me? And what about mine? And what are you going to get me? And what are you going to do for me? If you just begin to, just begin to shut all that down. You just begin to meditate before the Lord. Begin to wait upon God. Suddenly your life becomes a place of waiting upon God. Imagine it. Literally waiting upon God to be led by God, the Holy Ghost. Everything about your expressions, everything about your life is going to change if you begin to do this. It may, it may have to be developed for two, three, four, five years. But as you be, I don't know how long, and I'm not limiting God. But as you begin to do this, everything about how God can use you. I'm telling you, Father is looking for people that He can manifest His life and glory through. Come on, people. It's got to be more than something that we just dance around, shout hallelujah about, and never do. God's looking for some people who give themselves to saying, okay, Father, I'm gonna, I hear your word. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give myself to listening to you. I'm going to give myself to following you. Holy Spirit, I do not want to step one foot out of place doing my own thing. It is a consecration. It is then not only a consecration that you and I make, a decision that you and I make, but then we get examined and tried and tested in it because God's searching your hearts. He's saying, are you really going to, are you going to be here? Are you going to walk with me? Are you going to do this that I've given you to do? I've made you my heir. I've made you my joint heir, uh, my co-inheritor. I am supplied to you all that I have so that you can do these works and greater works so that you can have this word of authority, this mighty word in your mouth of my ministry of authority over unclean spirits and over diseases and over sicknesses, all power and all authority. Amazing. To live out the very life of God. To see the powers of darkness and the strongholds of mind blinding spirits broken off of people. We have, to, we have to become disinterested with our interests. We have to become disinterested with our interests. 
in the pursuit of our own life and welfare. And suddenly captivated by what God is interested in. A lost and dying world that we have no ability and no understanding of ourselves to even begin to make any kind of headway there. We've got to learn how to hear the Holy Ghost. We've got to learn how to listen to Him. We've got to learn how to be led by Him. We've got to learn how to live out His life, to walk with Him. He's here to help us, to teach us, to take everything that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ and transmit it to us, everything that belongs to the Father. Just imagine, imagine for a moment that God the Holy Ghost is here who has come with such glory and authority that it literally displaced all the loneliness and sense of loss in the disciples with Jesus now being absent. Imagine if you can that there is such an intimacy that actually takes you into a fellowship and a relationship that would be greater than you spending three and a half years with Jesus. Imagine, if you can, that God the Holy Ghost is here right now developing in us, trying to help us understand how to receive from Him because He wants to take everything that God the Father has and put it inside of our thinking abilities, our feeling faculties, our emotions, our passions, our understanding, our knowledge. Imagine it if you can. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale. It's not something that God is withholding from you and me. It's something that he's waiting for somebody. God, the Holy Ghost, as it were, is brooding over the mass of humanity, looking for somebody that will respond to all that Jesus Christ purchased for us, looking for somebody who will respond fully to him. And then walk with them. I was hearing the other day. This is a sorrowful story. About a young man. Who literally. Literally. And a, frick, a close friend of mine. Was on the receiving end of this. A young man who actually even stepped into being translated here in the United States of America. One morning, he was actually translated into the bedroom of my friend, put his hand on my friend's leg, said, your pain and your agony has come to an end. This disaster and destruction in your life will no longer hover over you. He sat there talking with him for some period of time. I believe it was like a couple of hours. If my friend's listening right now, he could correct me, but it was a couple of hours. Translated into his bedroom. Had, had the mind of the Spirit being able, because Father's building this thing. He looks for anybody. He finds one person over here, one person over there. They're in an obscurity. The, the authority in the word of knowledge, the authority in revelation, the authority in insight. He could tell you where you've been, who you are, what's going on in your life. And it was, was so accurate. There was anyone, everyone, just flowing in that dimension of authority in God. who then ultimately was taken out by the snare of the enemy. Because somehow, the church that he was in, there was too much arguing, bickering, and strife going on. And there wasn't anybody in the house to understand that you've got to shut that stuff down because it's going to ruin folks. It's a demonic realm where there's strife and envy. There's every evil thing. To be a, the, the, the point of it is, is these things are available. Yes. It's not a fairy tale. Just because you're not doing it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. God, the Holy Ghost, is here to try to convince us that it really does exist. Yes. And he's praying for us. And he's trying to prove it within our heart. To wanting these things in God, more than wanting all these things in this life. Mm -hmm. Wanting heaven more than earth. Yes. He said, I want more heaven more than earth. Well, you look pretty comfortable. Hearing that which you don't really want. You look pretty set up. Let God make, God, let God make a, a Holy Ghost transition for us. Because I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to people that are watching on the web. There's people, there's, once again, the audience is much bigger out there than it is in here. But I pray that, you, I pray that this, place, this place fills up with, I want more of you, Lord Jesus. I want more. Come on, people. Yeah. Yes, you quit playing, the, quit playing mind games with God and verbal games with God. 
Quit saying it over again, never doing it. Hearing the word of God go forth, you can't find no magnetic sign. What if God did say it? What if God did say it? What if God did say it? And the result of your obedience would have been a whole other dimension of usefulness in the kingdom. You would have stepped into a home. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the people that I'm talking about, that I've watched, that I've seen, observed, step into greater anointings than God, they were quick to obey. They were quick to do what God said. If you want to say they're going to learn how to hear the Holy Ghost on your own, no, you're not going to learn how to hear the voice of God through the Eli. If you don't know what that means, Samuel learned how to hear the voice of God when he heard the voice of God it sounded like Eli's voice. He learned how to hear the voice of God by obeying the ministry that was over him in the Lord. Not obeying, come over and change my light bulbs in my bathroom, mow my lawn. Obeying the word of the Lord that is spoken through the servant of the Lord. To recognize the man of God. Or the woman of God who speaks on behalf of God. People say, well, I want to speak on behalf of God. Well, you've never recognized that somebody else is speaking to you on behalf of God? Then no way, no way is God ever going to speak to you. Do you hear me? Yes. If God told you to get a magnetic sign, say, tax cat to heaven, put it on your car, would you do it? God came here, personally was revealed and said, I want you to get a magnetic sign, put tax cat to heaven on it, put it on your car. You start going picking people up, looking for them. Would you do it? Yes. No, you wouldn't. If you did it because I said it, then you would do it because he said it. If you won't do it because I said it, you won't do it because he said it. Period. It's what he says. That's what he says. That's what he says. That is the spiritual laws that God describes. And you'll have to deal with it. Because you could live in imagination saying, oh, I would have done it if God would have showed up. No, you wouldn't have. It would just been another level of excuse. It would been another level of reason of why it wouldn't, couldn't happen. They were out of magnetic signs when I got there. Are you listening to me? Yes. Oh, true. This is what God says, and he's, He knows what He's talking about. Well, I just didn't really take it as a word from the Lord. I just thought it was optional. Yeah, that's what many people have been doing with the whole Bible. Whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, most of it. You know how much God can use you? How much you obey Him. God uses you on the basis of how much you obey Him. That is an old limitation here. And nothing else, no other dynamic here. Nothing, 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 esoteric, nothing esoteric, nothing mystical. It's called obedience. Jesus simply says, you obey me, I'll come manifest myself to you. Father and I come make our dwelling. And Father's already come made His dwelling in us. He has, we don't recognize it. We just obeyed him on that level. And here he is dealing with us. And we just, we, Father wants to cause us to step out. Can you take what you have and begin to make, make it available to the master? Could you take your car and dedicate it to the kingdom of God? Someone said, I already dedicated to the kingdom of God. No, dedicated to the kingdom of God where it's about the kingdom of God. It's about going and picking up the loss with it. Then that, it's going to seek and save that which is lost. That's, the, that's what the kingdom of God is all about. That's what Jesus is doing. That's what Jesus came for. That's what the Holy Ghost is doing. The Spirit of the Lord has been poured out upon all flesh. Did you know that? Yes. So that you and I can go and minister to them. Yes. Go take the word of light to them. Yes. The Lord knows. So the Lord, maybe, maybe some of you, maybe some of you really went after it. You said, you know what? Last week, I went after 15, 20 people. None of them, I, none, I couldn't pick any of them up. None of them would get in the car. But the Lord knows. Stay at it. Before long, they're going to all pile in. Before long, you'll begin to move in a cooperation and anointing with God that there will be a divine magnet upon you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to invite people to church, they'll come. Yes. Even without going and picking them up, more than likely you're going to have to go pick them up first. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to make a transition, people. Yes. God wants you to make you transition. I'm not here to entertain the saints. I'm 
here to call you in by the Spirit of the Lord to cooperating more with Him so that Christ Jesus may be made manifest to your life, so that the glory of God may be shown, yes. shining as a light into the yes. world. Thank you, Lord. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say today, we have to love. The way we preach the gospel, it's got to be presented with the love that God loves us with. But it also has to be with the strict judgment which God will judge us with. Has to be both. Because souls of men, souls of men are at risk. There's family members here that are represented that are not walking with God. Father, give you the ability to press into that realm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. See the strongholds broken off your life. Amen. There's people here, you're dealing with the forces of hell, mm -hmm. fleshly lusts that are at, at war against your soul. Isn't it good that you've got great help? Yes. Yeah. But you've got to learn how to listen to them. You've got to learn how to move with them. Because when you got fleshly lust, listen to me, when you got fleshly lust warring against your soul. And you're overwhelmed by that voice and you've learned how to move with that voice and that appetite has been developed in your life. It's hard to go with divine appetites. It's hard to go with, with what God is saying. But it's really has a lot to do with how much, Father, can you really use us? Use us. I don't want you to look to yourself, God says. I want you to look to me and live. I don't want you to learn how to rely upon your own strength and your ability because having begun in the Spirit, if you've begun in the Holy Ghost, are you now made perfect by your own human ability? Isn't the Holy Ghost amazing? Yes, we yes. started with Him and He's perfecting us. Isn't yes. He great? Yes. He's coming to strengthen us. Yes. He's interceding on our behalf right now. I didn't read verse 35 to you, but there, there, verse 35 said Jesus lives to... Make intercession. Let me read it. Just stand there and look at me. I'll read it to you. I'll spoon feed you. No, it's not spoon feeding you. I'm just delivering you the word of God. I'm just hoping you'll do it. My mama used to tell me, she said, if I said to stand on your head and spit snowballs in the middle of July, you need to start trying. <laughs> hey? Well, what if God told you to do that? Well, I can't spit snowballs in the first place. The second place is July. <laughs> you going to argue? No, if Mama wants that kind of respect and that kind of obedience, figure what God wants. Yeah. You think he's impressed by your intellect? You think that God is impressed by our reasoning and all of our excuses? No, all we're doing is limiting what he's able to do in our lives. We're hurting ourselves. We gotta go, just come on, people. Just I'm just trying to break you out of whatever realm you're stuck in. People get stuck in recurrent sin pretty much because they're simply not willing to listen to Him. Where He's there, He's strengthening us, encouraging us, showing us, showing us how to move with the wind of the Holy Ghost. People never break through to the manifestation of the Spirit. Simply for the same reasons. You know, I want you to just begin to play that song. I want more of Jesus. Just real, just real soon. I've, that's what has going to have to be begin to be expressed in our life. Otherwise, we're never going to be the light of the world. We'll never be the light of the world. We'll never be the light of the world. I must understand how to move with the Holy Ghost in such a way that the Holy Spirit can fully reveal Jesus through me. You know, here in verse 35, it says, 
I just want to read this to you. Who is to separate us from the love of Christ? Forgive me. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God making intercession for us? There's a whole lot of prayer going on right now in heaven on our behalf. You know what that is about? You and I submitting and cooperating with the Holy Ghost to flow in His signs and wonders and miracles, to flow in His display of heaven. Amen. Let me read this scripture to you quickly as you're standing there listening. Because it's something that every one of us need to begin to understand about our own lives. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and from the Lamb. This is what Father wants coming out of our life. He wants purity coming out of our spirit. He wants purity coming out of our thoughts. He wants purity coming out of every dimension of our emotions. And the Holy Spirit is here to develop that. So that the unlimited, because if you want to talk about the unlimited expression of the Christ, the life of Christ Jesus, that's the ultimate in this description of purity. Of life, His holiness, and His goodness. And God the Holy Ghost is interceding right now and praying for us in this matter. And Christ Jesus is interceding and praying for us in this matter. And Father's dwelling in us and working with us to bring us to a place of submitting to Him. And He's just, you know, I can't imagine what it's like for Him to have to ride along as we go live out our own life. Doing our own thing, walking in it as mere men in human limitation. And He's just basically wanting to be revealed but not allowed. Because we've never dealt with reality. We've got this crazy idea going on in our head. God, the Holy Spirit, wants to bring us to a place of yieldingness and submission. He to clear your thoughts so He can begin to speak to you the word of knowledge. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He wants you to just set yourself aside to wait on Him, to hear His voice. Yes. Lord, I'm going to sit right here for two hours and I'm not going to move till I hear your voice. I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to practice hearing your voice today. Two hours. I'm going to sit here. Can you imagine what will happen to you? I'm going to tell you right now, things will change. I promise you. You will start hearing the voice of God. I don't know how long it will take you, but you will. Begin to Participate with this prayer, this ability, this divine power. Wow. That is revealed in the expressions of Ephesians 6, verse 18, which many people have just turned into a memory verse of Scripture, but it, it, it is loaded with divine wisdom and insight on how to move with God the Holy Ghost. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost, watching thereunto with all thanksgiving. Divine revelation, divine insight, insight on how to move in God, how to move with the wind of the Spirit, how to be led by God. My. My. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is here to lead you and me into the realms of glory, into deeper dimensions and expressions of the person of Christ Jesus to unveil to us what's going on in heaven right now, to open our eyes as real as He opened up the eyes of the servant of Elisha, as real as He opened up the eyes of Jacob, as real as He opened up the eyes of anyone else so that we can begin to understand all that He's planned for us and all that He's purposed for us and all that is going on around us in the heavenly realm. So we can express it. Jesus. Can you imagine tomorrow at about noon 
Or really, first thing in the morning, you're doing this. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine tomorrow about noon, you're doing this again? Just waiting on him. I want to hear your voice. Holy Spirit, I'm listening for you. Suddenly, you begin to go out wherever you're going, the store, and you're looking for the lost. You're looking for the moving of the Spirit. You're looking for the, the troubling of the waters. You're waiting on God. You know something's going on that's supernatural, it's heavenly. Now, all of a sudden, your eyes not going to be looking at other things you should not be looking on. Your mind and thoughts aren't going to be in interest of other things you shouldn't be interested in. It's not going to be over there in the kingdom of darkness. It's going to be over here in the kingdom of light. It's not going to be in cooperation with what's going on in your own interest and in your own life. But what's happening in the heart of the Father? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what happens when you begin to listen to what God is saying and you begin to cooperate with Him? You begin to set your heart and your affections upon Him. I'm telling you right now. An explosion of divine events is about ready to take place in our lives. God the Holy Ghost is praying for it. He's pleading about it. God the Lord Jesus Christ is praying for it. He's pleading over it. Hallelujah. And there's going to be a people in this house, right here in this place, that are going to obey God, going to move with them. Tell them to sit and listen to you. I'm listening for your voice, Father. Oh, 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 she parlo, she ritavo. Now, in the name of Jesus, you listen to me. Some of you have carried around baggage in your affections and your, and your attitudes that is nothing more than a barrier between you and God. Get over yourself, please. And understand, it's by going to your knees and saying, Holy Spirit, I'm not minding my own thoughts anymore. I'm just going to just, I'm going to train myself to get happy and be thankful. With all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, what does it look like to have all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost? That's not the groanings of the Holy Spirit. That's the utterances of the Holy Spirit. To be praying in the Holy Ghost is there highlighted for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hurra Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you feel the rain? Then your life is green enough. We live in the rain of His presence. You won't be a parched ground. You hear me? God is not willing that anyone perish. But you believe me this. Believe this. If you refuse or even neglect. Not just refuse. There will be people who will perish because they refuse. They refuse. Jesus has been presented to them. The gospel has been presented to them. They refuse. And they will perish eternally but there are also a category of people who neglects the greatest salvation it's not important to them I don't believe that there's any person in that category here tonight I want you to understand that I don't believe there's any person here that neglects the so greatest salvation you've just not matured and understanding enough to know how to move on with God that's all Father God, Father God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ is devoted to you getting it, to us getting it. But tonight, there are people standing in here. There's people watching by the web, by YouTube. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. You've never surrendered your life to Jesus. You're living your own life. And I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't get easier to surrender your life, surrender your life to the Lord as you delay, as you reject Him, as you turn Him away, as you wait for another day. It gets harder. 
don't delay. God's calling you. He loves you so much. He gave His only begotten Son for you. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord, but you call upon the name of the Lord with this kind of heart that you're not want, you do not want to live your own life anymore. You want His life. Amen. And then that's where the miracle of faith happens because you know the beautiful thing about God the Holy Ghost is He's the Spirit of Truth. The wonderful thing about God is He's the God of truth. He's not going to mix it up with a lie or falsehood. But when He sees truth, Lord, I want to live your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heaven invades you. Yes. Heaven invades your soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let him fill you with this joy. Let him fill you with this love. Let him fill you with this peace. Let him fill you with divine power and authority. Let him fill you with a whole new other vision for your life. <laughs> Let him take you to that place where you can go and you can look and you can see as far as eternity as it were and begin to behold the inheritance that God has for you the things that he'll do through you as you behold the life of Jesus Jesus Go ahead, sing that. 